help, help. Where is everyone? Julia, Willie, if you're in the house, hear me. Someone help me. Help you, Barnabas Collins. No one can hear your pitiful wailing just as no one could hear mine. Only the Almighty can help you now, Mr. Collins, and it remains to be seen if he will feel so disposed. I must be dreaming this. It can't be happening. But it is happening. No matter how inhuman a man may be, he cannot escape his own judgment day. Yours has arrived, Mr. Collins. Ask, how did you get back? Someone summoned me back. Cassandra. I do not know who it was. I only know that my spirit shall be eternally grateful. No, it couldn't have been Cassandra. She wouldn't have seen me perish like this. She'd get no satisfaction from this. But there are others, Mr. Collins, who will derive great satisfaction from seeing justice done this night. Their spirits, like my own, have had no rest for nearly 200 years. Tonight is their night, Mr. Collins. I don't know what you're talking about. Your victims, Mr. Collins. All those innocent victims who died by your hands. You're, you're the same even in spirit, Trask. You're as big a hypocrite as you ever were. You talk about my victims. What about your own? What about all those poor creatures that you sent to the gallows as witches? My works were guided by the hand of the Almighty himself. He showed me the way then, as he shows me the way now. Through his infinite wisdom, I have determined what your fate shall be. Hypocrites! 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 Silence! The spirits of the dead are growing restless, Mr. Collins. They are confident that retribution and justice shall be theirs. And they are anxious for the trial to begin. Trial? Yes. I have decided that it would not be right to punish you without first giving you a fair trial. You can't do this. I was condemned once before without a trial. Condemned to the living dead. I will not be condemned again. I am prepared to convene a jury of the dead in this room to sit in judgment upon you and to determine a verdict for or against you. No. Now, Mr. Collins, you will have an opportunity to defend yourself after the court is in session. And if you are ready, I shall summon the jury from their graves. I summon your first victim, Jeremiah Collins. No. Jeremiah died in a gun battle. He has no right to be here. I summon Jeremiah Collins. I summon from their watery graves the spirits of Ruby Tate and Maud Browning. No! No! I summon the spirit of Suki Forbes, whose life ended in this very house. I summon the spirit of Nathan Forbes, murdered at Collinwood on the 31st day of March, in the year of our Lord, 1796. He deserved to die. He was responsible for my mother's death. The jury has been convened and is ready, Mr. Collins. I now summon Ezra Simpson, who will preside over this court. Ezra Simpson was never a judge. He was a criminal and a traitor. Who better to judge a condemned man, Mr. Collins, then another condemned man, like all the rest of us in this court, he is one of the damned, and as such, eminently qualified to preside here.
The judge and jury are now ready. The trial of Barnabas Collins shall begin. Barnabas Collins, how plead you to the charge before this court? I am innocent. I was the first victim of this nightmare. There were circumstances beyond my control. The accused pleads not guilty. I shall proceed with the case for the prosecution. This isn't fair. There's no one here to defend me. Will the court permit the accused to speak in his own defense? So be it. I call as my first witness, Lieutenant Nathan Forbes. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. He is a liar and a cheat! He lied under oath once before! He is not qualified to testify here! Lieutenant Forbes, will you tell the court how you died? Strangulation. By whose hand? Barnabas Collins. And will you tell the court how Suki Forbes died? Strangulation. By whose hand? Barnabas Scott. He has no right to speak for anyone else. Silence! Well, I'm defined to be tried. I demand a fair trial. The accused will be silent. Lieutenant Forbes, will you tell the court how Ruby Tate died? Strangulation. No, that is wrong. By whose hand? Barnabas Collins. Will you tell the court how Maud Browning died? Strangulation. By whose hand? Barnabas Collins. That is all, Lieutenant. Your Honor. The prosecution has proved beyond doubt that the accused is guilty. Wait! You said I could conduct my own defense. Very well. Proceed. Lieutenant Forbes. Forbes, where are you going? Come back, Forbes! Come back and answer my questions! By his words and actions, Lieutenant Forbes has spoken for the other members of the jury who have now reached their verdict. But you said you'd give me a chance to defend myself. The jury will not be swayed by the accused. They must hear me. They have heard all the evidence that is necessary. They shall hear no more. You're a madman, Trask. Is the court ready to hear the verdict? Barnabas Collins, it is the judgment of this jury that you are guilty of the charges set before this court. It is their further judgment that the crimes of which you are guilty shall be punishable by death. Yes, you were wise to send for me when you did. I do hope you're planning to invite me in. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Come in. Professor, please tell me what's happened. Happened? Yes, yes. You said that Cassandra wouldn't bother me anymore, but she is. I could... I could hear her calling me. I'm sure you could. Well, why? I don't know why. You promised me you were going to get rid of her. Try not to panic, Mr. Peterson. The dreadful fact of the matter is that something has gone wrong. What are you talking about? Do you remember what happened in the cellar of the old house last night? Yes. I'm sorry to say I've just received a call from Dr. Hoffman to tell me that the brick wall which burst open and released the spirit of the Reverend Trask has somehow been sealed up again. Well, what does that mean? It means, among other things, that Cassandra Collins is still among us and as dangerous as ever. Well, I already know that. Are you sure that you convinced her that you killed me earlier this evening? I'm positive. She has no reason not to believe me. Good. It's imperative that she go on believing I'm dead. In the meantime, we mustn't let this little setback defeat us. We must think of a new plan to destroy the witch. I'm beginning to believe that that's impossible. Well, you would think so, being under her power as you are. But I'm an old hand at this. And I can tell you, it is possible, if not easy. Witches are devilishly clever, you know. Yeah, well, you don't have to tell me that. Just tell me how we're going to do it. Now, there isn't time to devise a new plan. We can only try to stop whatever she's planning for tonight. 
Well, what makes you think she's planning on doing anything? Oh, Mr. Peterson, for a lawyer, you are rather naive. And you're a little too outspoken for my taste, Professor. Ah, but being liked is not the same as being needed. As long as you still need my knowledge and experience, Mr. Peterson, I'm afraid you'll have to suffer my shortcomings. All right, all right. Just tell me how we're going to do it. Cassandra never sends for you unless she wants you to do something for her. The question is, what does she want you to do for her tonight? I haven't got the slightest idea. That's where you and I differ. I do have the slightest idea. Okay, well then tell me and we'll both know. In order to reactivate the dream curse, she must find a way to make Sam Evans have the dream. Which means that Mr. Evans may be in some danger at this very moment. Well, then we'd better get over to his place and warn him. No, you stay here. I'll go to the Evans cottage alone. Now look, I don't want to stay here by myself. What if she... Well, what if she sends for me again? You must use all your willpower to resist as long as you can. If it fails and you have to go to her, you must not let, let her know that I am alive. Is that understood? Yes. Good. By the way, Mr. Peterson, don't be afraid. At worst, she can only use you. She can't hurt you. Why, Mrs. Collins, what a surprise. Good evening, Miss Evans. I heard what happened to your father. And well, I know he's always been so close to the Collins family. So I wanted to bring him something. Oh, well, how thoughtful of you. Forgive me. Come in. Come in. Thank you. My Professor Stokes. Cassandra. How exquisite you're looking. Thank you. How have you been, Professor? Alive and kicking. Yes. I'm sure that you'll outlive all of us. I shouldn't be a bit surprised if I did. Oh, Mrs. Collins, I'd like you to meet my fiancé, Joe Haskell. Joe, this is Cassandra Collins. How do you do? It's nice to meet you. Your father isn't here? No, he's in town with some friends. Yes, at the Blue Whale. Sam is determined not to let his handicap interfere with his social life. Oh, and I'm sorry to have missed him. Perhaps I can give this to him some other time. Oh, no, not at all. I'll just put it over here. You can stay if you'd like. He should be back in a short time. Oh, no, I'm afraid I can't do that. I told Roger I'd come right back to Collinwood. Wait, you can't stay for a cup of coffee or a, a drink? No, thanks very much, but I'm afraid I must go. Well, don't worry about that. I'll give it to him the minute he comes in. And thank you very much for thinking of him. It was very sweet of you. Not at all. Good evening, Miss Evans. Good night. Good evening, Mr. Haskell. Good night. Professor, it was nice to see you again. I'm sorry you're leaving so soon, Cassandra. I so seldom see you nowadays. We'll be meeting again, Professor. I'm sure we will. Give my regards to Roger. Oh, and Cassandra, if you see Miss Winters, would you give her a message for me? I'd be happy to. It's about an 18th century portrait she bought a little while ago. Tell Miss Winters I'm no longer interested in buying it from her. May I tell her why? Yes. I found out that the one she bought is a copy. Tell her I've discovered the original. I can't get over how different she is. Different? What do you mean? Well, the first time I met her, I thought she was so cold. And just now, I thought she was so warm and charming. Oh, forgive me. Professor, you were the one that introduced her to Roger, weren't you? Yes, I, I was. <laughs> well, Mr. Haskell, did you say Mr. Evans was at the Blue Whale? Yes, I did. Well, I'm a little pressed for time myself. Perhaps I'd, I'd better go there and find him. But he may have left for home by the time you get there. In that case, I'll come back. Yes, but you will be sure to see him and talk to him. Well, it's not absolutely imperative that I talk to him tonight. 
Well, what about the dream? You said there was some danger. I don't think there's any danger of his having the dream tonight. Forgive me, but I've got a number of things to do, and if I hurry, I may find him at the Blue Whale. Good night. Oh, all those things would be quite inappropriate. Oh, no, I know what I'll do, Tony. You're going to fall very deeply in love with me. The moment that you kiss me, and you're going to stay in love with me as long as I want you to. We're being watched. What? The woman in the window. It's, it's Mrs. Stoddard. I'd have a little more respect for you if, if you'd admit it and stop treating me like an idiot. I admit what? I told you, you misinterpreted what you saw. Oh, stop it. You were in his arms, about to kiss him. I know what I saw. Be thankful that I'm giving you a chance to explain it. Why do you even bother? If you're so convinced, I'm sure you don't think there is a ju justifiable explanation. I don't. Well, then why are we even talking? You're right. The person I should be talking to is Roger. Is that what you're planning to do? Yes, as soon as I can find him. Do you think he'll believe you? Yes. I don't. He won't want to believe you. You think you know him so well? I'm his wife. I've been his sister longer than you've been his wife. And don't un overestimate my influence with him. Because I'm going to give you something to think about. Something that will fill your every waking moment. And that is... Death. In all its forms and manifestations, you will think of it day and night. Death. Death, Mrs. Stoddard. And most of all, your own death. Are the descriptions accurate? Sheriff, do you think anybody could jump off Widow's Hill and survive? Well, neither do I, so it must have been someone else. I see. Well, how many people have described in this way? All right, will you let me know the minute you hear anything? Thank you. up there. Is that you, Barnabas? Where are you? Mrs. Stoddard? Barnabas, are you down there? No, ma'am, it's just me, Willie. Willie? Where's Mr. Collins? Well, I don't know. I, I, he went out early tonight. I, I ain't seen him. Where'd he go? Well, you got me. You want me to tell him something for you? Yes. Tell him the police have called again. Police? The sheriff has had several reports of vandalism in this area. And everyone has seen the man who fits Adam's description. Adam? But, 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 but that ain't possible. I mean, Adam is dead. We, we, we both know that, don't we? Well, don't we, Mrs. Stoddard? Look, you, you, you shouldn't let people upset you like that. I mean... Carolyn is safe, if that's what you're worried about. Death isn't always as swift or as certain as people would like it to be. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I mean, but I know that these people who say they've seen Adam, they're wrong, that's all. Sometimes it seems to take forever. And the waiting becomes unbearable. And Mrs. Stoddard, you, you feeling all right? 
She told me I'd think of nothing but death. And she was right. Uh, who are you talking about? Oh. How long will it be? How long before my time comes? Your time for what? Dying. Stutter, hey, what are you talking about? You ain't gonna die. Yes, I am. Mr. Stoddard, you, you shouldn't talk that way. I mean, you got everything to live for. Everything except the will to live. Mr. Stoddard, what's wrong with you? I ain't never seen you this way before. What's that noise? What noise? It's coming from here. As if someone were behind the wall. Well, no, that, that can't be. This, this wall's all sealed up. Whoever was there, then, was... There's no one there. Whoever was there, buried alive. Hey, Mrs. Stoddard. Oh, I can't bear it. Why doesn't she kill me now and get it over with? Hey, Mrs. Stoddard, wait! She ought to see a doctor. Oh. Oh, Willie? Willie? Joey? What is it? You better sit down. Oh. Hey. Oh, everything went black. You're gonna be all right? Yeah, just let me sit down. Hey. Look, you just stay right here and I'll get a cold cloth from the kitchen and then... Okay. Oh. Willie, bad! Oh. Oh. Bad! 